Livestock are the cornerstone of agricultural societies, providing a myriad of products essential for human survival and comfort. From meat and dairy to wool and leather, these domesticated animals have played a pivotal role in shaping human civilization. The history of livestock domestication stretches back thousands of years, with early humans recognizing the benefits of taming certain species for their needs. Following the domestication of dogs, animals like sheep, cows, and pigs were among the first to be brought into human settlements. This transition from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to one based on agriculture marked a significant turning point in human history. Domestication brought about a symbiotic relationship between humans and animals. Humans provided food, shelter, and protection, while animals offered labor and renewable resources. For example, sheep provided wool for clothing and milk for sustenance, while cows supplied milk, meat, and hides for various purposes. Pigs were valued for their meat and fat, and they also served as efficient scavengers, helping to clean up waste. The domestication of plants and animals revolutionized human society by fostering stable food production. Instead of relying solely on hunting and foraging, early humans could cultivate crops and raise livestock, ensuring a more predictable food supply. This agricultural revolution laid the foundation for settled communities, trade networks, and the development of complex civilizations. Livestock also played a crucial role in human migration and exploration. As humans expanded into new territories, they brought their domesticated animals with them, spreading agriculture and animal husbandry to distant lands. The exchange of livestock between different regions and cultures facilitated cultural exchange and economic growth. Over time, selective breeding and agricultural advancements led to the development of specialized breeds optimized for specific purposes. Farmers selectively bred animals with desirable traits, such as increased milk production or faster growth rates, shaping the genetic diversity of livestock populations. In this video, we delve into the fascinating journey of some of the most important domesticated animals, tracing their evolution from wild counterparts to indispensable partners in human civilization. The history of domestic sheep traces back to 11,000 to 9,000 BC, when wild mouflon were first domesticated in ancient Mesopotamia. They were raised primarily for meat, milk, and skins, with woolly sheep emerging around 6,000 BC and later being traded to Africa and Europe. The mouflon is believed to be the main ancestor of domestic sheep, although the exact lineage remains uncertain. Some breeds like the Castle Milk Moret were created by crossbreeding with wild European mouflon. While the Uriel was once considered a forebear, genetic studies suggest otherwise due to differences in chromosome numbers. Some theories suggest the involvement of unknown wild sheep species in domestic sheep development Ancient sheep could have their wool plucked by hand or collected after shedding, a trait seen in modern unrefined breeds like the Soe. Weaving and spinning wool were initially home-based crafts, crucial in civilizations like Babylon, Sumeria, and Persia, where wool was highly valued. Biblical figures owned large flocks, and sheep were even used as currency in barter economies. Sheep were one of the earliest animals to be domesticated by humans, although dogs were likely domesticated over 20,000 years earlier. The domestication of sheep is estimated to have occurred between 11,000 and 8,000 BCE in Mesopotamia, with possible independent domestication in Mergar, South Asia, around the 7th millennium BCE. Their wild relatives had traits like docility, manageable size, early maturity, sociability, and high reproduction rates, making them ideal candidates for domestication. Today, Ovis Aries is entirely domesticated, heavily reliant on humans for its well-being. Feral sheep do exist, but are limited to areas without large predators, often islands. Sheep were initially kept for meat, milk, and skins, but the development of woolly sheep began around 6,000 BCE in Southwest Asia or Western Europe. The earliest evidence of woven wool garments dates back two to 3,000 years later. Before this, sheep hides were tanned and worn as tunics, the rise of woolen clothing allowed humans to inhabit colder regions than the Fertile Crescent. Archaeological findings like sheep bones at Katalhoyuk suggest established populations of domestic sheep. By the Bronze Age, sheep resembling modern breeds were widespread in Western Asia. Settlements like Jaitun, dating back to 6000 BCE, relied on sheep and goats as primary livestock. Nomadic pastoralism, characterized by sheep and goat bones, limited architecture and absence of grain processing, 
has been identified in archaeological sites, akin to modern nomadic pastoral peoples. Sheep swiftly made their way into Africa following their domestication in Western Asia. While a minority of historians once argued for an African origin theory for Ovis Ares, based on rock art and osteological evidence from Barbary sheep, the prevailing view is that sheep entered North Africa via Sinai and were present in ancient Egyptian society around 8 to 7,000 years ago. In Europe, sheep husbandry took root early on, with the Castelnovian people near Marseille among the first to keep domestic sheep around 6,000 BCE. Ancient Greek civilization heavily relied on sheep as primary livestock, even going as far as naming individual animals. Early Scandinavian sheep, characterized by short tails and multicolored fleece, were also prevalent. The Roman Empire played a significant role in the spread of sheep raising throughout Europe, with Pliny the Elder extensively discussing sheep and wool in his work Natural History. Goat evolution traces the development of domestic goats through natural selection. Wild goats, medium-sized mammals thriving in harsh environments like forests and mountains in the Middle East and Central Asia, were among the first species domesticated by humans around 8,000 BCE. Belonging to the family Bovidae, which includes various ruminants like bison, cows, and sheep, goats share common traits such as hooves, a herbivorous diet, and horned males, and often females. Bovids diverged from deer and giraffids during the early Miocene epoch. The subfamily Caprini, encompassing goats, ibex, and sheep, separated from the rest of Bovidae as early as the late Miocene, with the group experiencing its peak diversity during the Ice Ages. The Caprini tribe emerged as caprids settled in Eurasian mountains, splitting into goats and sheep due to further geographic separation. Sheep ancestors remained in the foothills, while goat ancestors migrated to higher altitudes. This divergence led to goats adapting to mountainous environments, acquiring traits unique to the species. During the Ice Ages, a genus called Capri evolved, diversifying into modern goat species and several ibex species. The earliest domestication is believed to be of the Bezoar ibex in the Zagros Mountains, with these initial domesticated goats serving as sources of meat, milk, and materials for Neolithic farmers' needs. Over 300 goat breeds have been established for various purposes, including maximizing milk production and meat. Domestication and selective breeding significantly influenced goat evolution, shaping their behavior through consistent interaction with humans. Selective breeding also expanded the physical diversity of modern goats, introducing traits absent in wild counterparts. Estimates suggest that goats were first domesticated around 9,500-9,900 years ago, primarily in southeastern Anatolia. However, separate instances of domestication occurred in Iran approximately 6,500 years ago, and in eastern Turkey 2,500 years ago. Most domesticated goats today trace their ancestry back to these later cases, rather than the initial domestication event. Evidence for domestication also exists in Western Asia, dated around 8,000 years ago. Early goat domestication provided meat, milk, clothing, and fuel for Neolithic farmers, and goat remains were likely used in constructing shelters and weapons. The domestication process accelerated both evolutionary development and genetic diversity in the goat population resulting in around 300 recorded breeds tailored for various purposes. Similar to other domesticated animals, goats' behavior has changed over thousands of years of interaction with humans and selective breeding, leading to accelerated evolution. Research has revealed how goats have adapted to human presence, including their tendency to look to humans for assistance when faced with new puzzles or changes to familiar ones. For instance, in experiments where goats were given a box with inaccessible food, they would gaze towards their human companions, indicating a seeking of help, a behavior also observed in dogs and other domesticated animals. The study found that goats were more likely to seek assistance from humans who were facing them and appeared attentive. This reliance on human assistance in problem solving, especially for visual cues, suggests a significant shift in behavior since domestication. Selective pressure has also increased the physical diversity of goats, and led to populations specialized in producing specific products such as milk or meat beyond what is typical in the wild. Despite later gene exchange between different regions, modern goats in Europe, Africa, and Asia still exhibit genetic similarities to samples from Western, Southern, and Eastern Neolithic sites, respectively. This suggests that goats migrated across Europe from Turkey, 
to Asia from Iran, and to Africa from the Levant, with migrations occurring gradually as pastoralists settled into new regions. In the Mediterranean region, settlements in Greece and Cyprus date back as far as 9,000 years ago. Colonists settled along the coast, and locals gradually adopted their farming practices. Farming communities in Greece and Bulgaria emerged around 6,500 years ago. Goats and farming practices spread northwards along the Danube, reaching Western Europe and Scandinavia by 4,000, 5,000 years ago. A Mediterranean route brought goats to Italy and Spain around 7,500 years ago. Goats from the Levant migrated to Africa, crossing the Sinai to North Africa 7,000 years ago. Mediterranean travelers also introduced goats to the northern African coast. The grasslands of the Sahara supported pastoralism before desertification forced herders south, reaching South Africa by 2,000 years ago. Goats from the Eastern Fertile Crescent traveled across the Khyber Pass into the Indian subcontinent, then dispersed over land and sea to Southeast Asia. Migrants traversing the Eurasian Steppe brought goats to Mongolia and China by 4,500 years ago. With the advent of sea trade, goats were transported around the world by explorers and settlers, leading to their spread across continents. In the 15th century, African and Spanish goats interbred and colonized America. Similarly, goats from Britain and African seaports arrived in New Zealand, Australia, and Pacific Islands during the 18th century. This facilitated the global distribution of goats and their integration into various ecosystems and human cultures across the globe. The pig, scientifically known as Sus domesticus, commonly referred to as swine or hog, is an omnivorous, domesticated mammal with even-toed hooves. It is categorized as the domestic pig when distinguishing it from other members of the genus Seuss. While some authorities consider it a subspecies of Seuss scrofa, the wild boar or Eurasian boar, others regard it as a distinct species. Pigs were domesticated during the Neolithic period, both in East Asia and the Near East. Upon their arrival in Europe, domesticated pigs extensively interbred with wild boar while maintaining their domestic characteristics. Pigs are primarily farmed for meat, known as pork, while their skin or hide is used for leather. China leads as the world's largest pork producer, followed by the European Union and the United States. Approximately 1.5 billion pigs are raised annually, yielding around 120 million tons of meat, often cured as bacon. Some pigs are also kept as pets. Archaeological findings indicate that pigs were domesticated from wild boar in the Near East, particularly in or around the Tigris Basin where they were managed in a semi-wild state akin to some modern practices in New Guinea. Evidence suggests the presence of pigs in Cyprus over 11,400 years ago, introduced from the mainland, implying domestication in the adjacent mainland by then. Separate domestication of pigs also occurred in China, starting around 8,000 years ago. In the Near East, pig husbandry spread over the next few millennia, although it gradually declined during the Bronze Age among rural populations focusing on other livestock for commodities, but was sustained in urban areas. The process of domestication did not involve reproductive isolation or population bottlenecks. Western Asian pigs were introduced into Europe, where they interbred with wild boar, including with a now extinct ghost population during the Pleistocene. Domestic pig genomes show strong selection for genes affecting behavior and morphology, likely due to human selection for domestic traits countering the gene flow from wild boars, creating distinct domestication islands in the genome. Pigs arrived in Europe from the Near East at least 8,500 years ago, and over the next 3,000 years, they interbred with European wild boar, resulting in less than 5% Near Eastern ancestry in their genomes while retaining their domesticated characteristics. DNA evidence from subfossil remains indicates that the first domestic pigs in Europe were brought from the Near East, stimulating the domestication of local European wild boar, leading to a third domestication event, with the eventual disappearance of Near Eastern genes in European pig stock. In more recent history, there were complex exchanges, with European domesticated lines being exported back to the ancient Near East. Historical records also suggest the reintroduction of Asian pigs into Europe during the 18th and early 19th centuries. In the 16th century Colombian exchange, the Spanish introduced pigs to the Kiloe Archipelago, where they proved highly adaptable to local conditions. 
benefiting from the abundance of shellfish and algae exposed by the archipelago's large tides. Pigs thrived in the new environment. Similarly, pigs brought to southeastern North America from Europe by early Spanish explorers, including DeSoto, became feral after escaping from farms. Feral pigs have since established populations in various parts of the world, causing environmental and agricultural issues. In the southeastern United States, feral pig populations have migrated north to the Midwest, prompting state agencies to implement removal programs. In regions like New Zealand and northern Queensland, feral pigs have inflicted significant environmental damage. Hybridization between European wild boar and domestic pigs has exacerbated the problem, leading to crop destruction, the spread of diseases like foot and mouth disease, and predation on wildlife such as seabirds and tortoises. Feral pig damage poses a significant challenge, particularly in southeastern South America. Cattle, scientifically known as Bos taurus, are large, domesticated ungulates widely used as livestock. They belong to the subfamily Bovinae and are the most common species of the genus Bos. Mature female cattle are referred to as cows, while mature males are called bulls. Young females are heifers, young males are oxen or bullocks, and castrated males are known as steers. Cattle are raised for various purposes, including meat, dairy products, and leather. They also serve as draft animals, pulling carts and farm implements. In India, cattle hold sacred significance. Some smaller breeds, like the miniature zebu, are kept as pets. Taurine cattle are spread across Europe and temperate regions of Asia, the Americas, and Australia. Zebus are mainly found in India and tropical areas of Asia, America, and Australia. Sangha cattle are predominant in sub-Saharan Africa. These types, sometimes considered distinct species or subspecies, are further divided into over 1,000 recognized breeds. The relationship between wild cattle and humans spans thousands of years, with approximately five species of wild cattle being domesticated over the past 10,500 years. Around 8,500 years BCE, following the domestications of sheep and goats, taurine cattle were domesticated in the Near East from the wild and now extinct aurochs. The initial domestic cattle exhibited long horns, a phenotype still common in various British, French, Mediterranean, and African breeds. Around 3,000 years BCE, cattle with short horns emerged in Mesopotamia, better suited to certain habitats, leading to their widespread adoption through a second wave of migrations. Meanwhile, long-horned forms persisted in Asia and neighboring regions, reaching Britain around 1,000 to 2,000 years BCE. Short-horned cattle became the predominant form in Europe from around 1,000 years BCE. Archaeological evidence from Neolithic farms in Europe suggests that cattle migrated along two main routes, the Mediterranean coasts and the Danube River, eventually reaching the North Sea coasts by around 3,000 years BCE. Additionally, North Asia may have been colonized via the Caucasus route. Around 4,000, 5,000 years BCE, cattle migrations into Africa were also observed. Large-scale movements of cattle were often associated with the migrations of Germanic peoples during the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. The modern zebu, widespread today, was domesticated around 6,000 years BCE from its ancestor, the aurochs, Bos primigenius nematicus, in the Indus Valley. It acquired its characteristic hump only after domestication. Following domestication, the zebu spread from the Indus Valley to the tropical zones of most continents reaching regions like China, Indochina, and Indonesia. Subsequent movements westward, starting around 2000 years BCE, brought Zebu to Africa, completing its global distribution. The llama, a domesticated South American camelid, has been utilized by Andean cultures as a meat and pack animal since the pre-Columbian era. Living in herds, llamas are social creatures, their wool is soft and contains minimal lanolin. They possess a capacity to learn simple tasks after a few repetitions. When used as pack animals, llamas can carry about 25 to 30% of their body weight for distances of eight to 13 kilometers. The name llama was adopted by European settlers from native Peruvians, though it was historically spelled llama or glama. Believed to have originated from the Great Plains of North America around 40 million years ago, Llamas migrated to South America about 3 million years ago during the Great American Interchange. 
By the end of the last ice age, 10,000, 12,000 years ago, camelids had become extinct in North America. The transition from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to widespread agriculture was facilitated by the use of llama dung as fertilizer. Among the Moche people, llamas held significant cultural importance, often being included in the burials of important individuals as offerings or provisions for the afterlife. The Moche depicted llamas realistically in their ceramics, showcasing their reverence for these animals. In the Inca Empire, llamas served as the primary beasts of burden. Many regions under Inca rule had long-standing traditions of llama herding, and for the Inca nobility, llamas held symbolic significance. Llama figures were frequently buried with the deceased as part of their rituals. Even today, llamas continue to be utilized in South America for tasks such as carrying loads, producing fiber, and providing meat. The Inca deity, Urcuchile, was depicted in the form of a multicolored llama, underscoring the spiritual significance of these animals in Inca culture. Carl Troll has suggested that the abundance of llamas in the southern Peruvian highlands played a crucial role in the rise of the Inca Empire. It is noteworthy that the maximum extent of the Inca Empire coincided with the widespread distribution of alpacas and llamas in pre-Hispanic America. Research continues to explore the relationship between the Andean biomes, llama pastoralism, and the rise of the Inca state. During the Spanish conquest era, one of the primary roles of llamas was to transport ore from the mines in the mountains. Gregory de Bolivar estimated that around his time, as many as 300,000 llamas were employed in transporting produce solely from the Potosi mines. However, with the introduction of horses, mules, and donkeys, the significance of llamas as beasts of burden declined significantly. The alpaca, Llama pacos, is a South American camelid mammal species often confused with the llama, though notably smaller. Both animals are closely related and can crossbreed successfully. Believed to have been domesticated from wild relatives, the vicuna and guanaco alpacas come in two breeds, the suri alpaca and the huacaya alpaca. Found grazing in herds on the high plains of the Andes in southern Peru, western Bolivia, Ecuador, and northern Chile, alpacas thrive at altitudes ranging from 3,500 to 5,000 meters, 11,000 to 16,000 feet above sea level. Unlike llamas, which were bred for labor, alpacas were specifically bred for their fiber. Alpaca fiber is prized for its quality and is used to craft various knitted and woven items, similar to sheep's wool. These products include blankets, sweaters, hats, gloves, scarves, ponchos, and a wide range of textiles in South America, as well as sweaters, socks, coats, and bedding in other parts of the world. Alpacas, domesticated thousands of years ago, hold a significant place in Andean history and culture. The Moche people of northern Peru depicted alpacas in their art, showcasing their importance in ancient society. Unlike llamas, there are no known wild alpacas, with their closest living relative being the vicuna, native to South America, and considered the wild ancestor of the alpaca. The family Camelidae originated in the Americas around 40, 45 million years ago during the Eocene period, evolving from the common ancestor Protolopus. This family split into the Camelini and Lamini tribes, with different migratory patterns leading to Asia and South America, respectively. While camelids became extinct in North America approximately 3 million years ago, they thrived in the South, giving rise to the species we see today. It wasn't until two, five million years ago during the Pliocene that the genus Hemiaukenia of the Lamini tribe split into Paleolama and Lama, with the latter further dividing into Lama and Vicuña upon migrating to South America. Camels, like horses, originated in North America and migrated across Beringia to Asia. While they thrived in the Old World, the original wild camels in North America disappeared during the spread of the first indigenous peoples into the continent from Asia, around 10 to 12,000 years ago. However, there's no definitive evidence associating their extinction with hunting. Today, most camels are domesticated, serving various purposes around the world. Although feral populations can be found in Australia, India, and Kazakhstan, wild camels are limited to the Gobi Desert where the wild Bactrian camel population persists. The exact timing and location of the first domestication of camels remain disputed among scholars. 
Some theories suggest that dromedaries were initially domesticated by humans in Somalia or South Arabia during the third millennium BC, while the Bactrian camels in Central Asia may have been domesticated around 2500 BC. Evidence from archaeological sites like Shari Sokhta in Iran supports these hypotheses. A 2016 study, which analyzed modern and ancient mitochondrial DNA, proposed that camels were first domesticated in the Southeast Arabian Peninsula, with the Bactrian type later being domesticated in Central Asia. It's believed that humans had domesticated the Bactrian camel by at least the middle of the third millennium BC, somewhere east of the Zagros Mountains, with the practice then spreading into Mesopotamia. References to camels in patriarchal narratives may pertain to the Bactrian camel in some regions, although the camel is not mentioned in relation to Canaan in historical texts. The chicken, scientifically known as Gallus gallus domesticus, is a round and sizable bird with short wings. It was domesticated from the red jungle fowl of Southeast Asia approximately 8,000 years ago. Primarily, chickens are raised for their meat and eggs, which serve as significant sources of food. Additionally, some chickens are kept as pets, while others unfortunately are involved in cockfighting. Chickens are incredibly common and widespread domestic animals with a staggering total population of 23.7 billion recorded as of 2018. Each year, more than 50 billion chickens are produced globally. Hens bred specifically for egg laying can yield over 300 eggs per year, contributing significantly to egg production. Beyond their economic importance, chickens hold a prominent place in various cultural aspects, including folklore, religion, and literature. They have become symbolic figures in many societies around the world. The domestication of chickens from their wild ancestor, the red jungle fowl, is a fascinating tale of human ingenuity and the natural adaptation of animals. Early studies suggested that a single domestication event of the red jungle fowl in present-day Thailand gave rise to the modern chicken, with minor transitions leading to the diverse breeds we see today. The red jungle fowl, well adapted to exploit the abundance of seeds produced during bamboo seeding cycles, exhibited prolific reproduction when food was plentiful. Humans, in domesticating chickens, capitalized on this natural trait, fostering a partnership that would profoundly shape human history. The precise timing and location of chicken domestication have been subjects of debate among scholars. Genomic studies estimate that chickens were domesticated approximately 8,000 years ago in Southeast Asia, with their presence spreading to China and India over the following 2,000 to 3,000 years. Archaeological evidence corroborates the presence of domesticated chickens in Southeast Asia as early as 6000 BC, in China by 6000 BC, and in India by 2000 BC. However, a groundbreaking study published in Nature in 2020 shed new light on the origins of domestic chickens. This study, which fully sequenced 863 chickens worldwide, suggests that all domestic chickens stem from a single domestication event involving red jungle fowl primarily distributed in southwestern China, northern Thailand, and Myanmar. As domesticated chickens spread across Southeast and South Asia, they interbred with local wild species of jungle fowl, giving rise to genetically and geographically distinct groups. Further analysis revealed that even popular commercial breeds like the white leghorn possess a mosaic of divergent ancestries inherited from different subspecies of red jungle fowl. This intricate genetic history highlights the complex interactions between humans and animals during the process of domestication, shaping the diversity of chicken breeds we see today. The domestic chicken, known as asterisk manuk in the reconstructed Proto-Austronesian language, holds a significant place in human history, particularly among the Austronesian peoples. Evidence suggests that chickens, along with dogs and pigs, were carried by Austronesian migrants during their maritime expansions across island Southeast Asia, Micronesia, island Melanesia, Polynesia, and even Madagascar, starting from around 3000 BC, originating from Taiwan. This widespread dissemination of chickens reflects their importance in Austronesian cultures since ancient times. While the exact route and timing of the introduction of chickens to different regions remain subjects of study, it is believed that prehistoric Austronesian seafarers played a crucial role in spreading chickens to various parts of the world. There is speculation that chickens might have been introduced to South America during pre-Columbian times by Polynesian seafarers, although concrete evidence for this remains elusive. The presence of chicken remains in the Middle East dates back to around 2000 BC, 
with evidence from Syria indicating their early domestication. By 1400 BC, chickens had reached Egypt, primarily for the purpose of cockfighting, and by 300 BC, they were widely bred in Egypt for various purposes. The Phoenicians further spread chickens along the Mediterranean coasts, extending their influence as far as Iberia. During the Hellenistic period, 4th-2nd centuries BC, chickens began to be domesticated for food in the southern Levant, marking a significant shift in their role from primarily being used for cockfighting to becoming a common food source. The earliest depictions of chickens in Europe are found on Corinthian pottery dating back to the 7th century BC, indicating their presence and importance in ancient European cultures. Breeding practices intensified under the Roman Empire, contributing to the genetic diversity and widespread distribution of domestic chickens across Europe and beyond. However, during the Middle Ages, breeding activities declined, reflecting broader societal changes during that period. Recent genetic sequencing of chicken bones from archaeological sites in Europe has provided insights into the evolutionary history of chickens, revealing changes in their behavior and reproductive patterns over time. For instance, in the High Middle Ages, chickens became less aggressive, and they began laying eggs earlier in the breeding season, reflecting the ongoing domestication process and human selection pressures. This highlights the dynamic relationship between humans and chickens throughout history, shaping their genetic makeup and cultural significance. The introduction of domestic chickens into Africa during the early first millennium AD likely occurred through various routes, each influenced by different historical and cultural factors. One possible route was through the Egyptian Nile Valley, where trade networks and cultural exchanges facilitated the movement of goods, including livestock, between regions. Another potential avenue was the East Africa Roman Greek or Indian trade routes, which connected East Africa to the wider Mediterranean and Indian Ocean worlds, allowing for the exchange of commodities, including chickens. Additionally, chickens may have been introduced into Africa through interactions between Carthage and the Berbers, with trade and migrations across the Sahara Desert serving as conduits for the spread of domestic animals. The earliest known chicken remains in Africa have been discovered in Mali, Nubia, the East Coast, and South Africa, dating back to the middle of the first millennium AD. The debate over whether domestic chickens were present in the Americas before Western contact continues among researchers. However, the presence of blue egg chickens, a trait found only in chickens from the Americas and Asia, suggests an Asian origin for early American chickens. The lack of comprehensive data from key regions such as Thailand, Russia, the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa complicates efforts to map the spread of chickens in these areas accurately. Nevertheless, ongoing research efforts, including genetic analysis of local chicken breeds threatened by extinction, hold promise for enhancing our understanding of the historical movements of chickens and their interactions with human populations. In South America, chicken bones discovered on the Araco Peninsula in South Central Chile were initially radiocarbon dated as pre-Columbian, and DNA analysis suggested a connection to prehistoric populations in Polynesia. The domestic turkey, scientifically known as Meliagris gallopavo domesticus, is a notable avian species belonging to the genus Meliagris which also includes the wild turkey. Historically, it was believed that turkey domestication took place in central Mesoamerica around 2,000 years ago. However, recent research has proposed the intriguing possibility of a second domestication event occurring in what is now the southwestern United States, with a time frame estimated between 200 BC and 500 AD. Despite this, it's important to note that all major domestic turkey breeds we see today trace their origins back to the turkeys initially raised in central Mexico. These turkeys were later introduced to Europe by Spanish explorers during the 16th century. The lineage of the modern domestic turkey can be traced back to the South Mexican subspecies, known as M. G. Gallopavo of the wild turkey. This subspecies was originally found in central Mexico, inhabiting a region delineated by the present Mexican states of Jalisco to the northwest, Guerrero to the southwest, and Veracruz to the east. In ancient Mesoamerica, this particular subspecies was domesticated by indigenous peoples, who utilized its meat and eggs as primary sources of protein. Additionally, the feathers of these turkeys were extensively used for decorative purposes. Among the indigenous civilizations of Mesoamerica, such as the Aztecs, 
the turkey held symbolic significance. The Aztecs, for instance, associated the turkey with their trickster god Tezcatlipoca, possibly due to its perceived humorous behavior, although specific historical records regarding this association are scarce. During the age of exploration and colonization, Spanish explorers brought domestic turkeys from the New World back to Europe. In Europe, various distinct breeds of turkeys were developed, each with its own unique characteristics. Examples include the Spanish black and royal palm breeds, which emerged as a result of selective breeding and adaptation to different environments. The breeding of turkeys experienced significant advancements in the early 20th century, leading to the development of new breeds such as the Beltsville small white. These breeding efforts aimed to enhance desirable traits such as meat quality, size, and reproductive efficiency, contributing to the diversity of turkey breeds available today. The introduction of the turkey into England is commonly attributed to the 16th century English navigator William Strickland. He is often credited with bringing the turkey to England, with his family coat of arms depicting a turkey cock as the family crest, marking one of the earliest known European depictions of a turkey. Evidence from historical records indicates that turkeys were already part of farmers' fare at Christmas in England by 1573, as noted by English farmer Thomas Tusser. The domestic duck, Anas platyrhynchos domesticus, is a subspecies of mallard that has been domesticated and raised for meat and eggs. A few are kept for show as pets or for their ornamental value. Almost all varieties of domesticated ducks, apart from the domestic muscovy duck, Carina muscata, are descended from the mallard, which was domesticated in China around 2000 BC. Domestic ducks appear from whole genome sequencing to originate from a single domestication event of mallards during the Neolithic, followed by rapid selection for lineages favoring meat or egg production. They were probably domesticated in southern China around 2000 BC by the rice paddy farming ancestors of modern Southeast Asians and spread outwards from that region. There are few archaeological records, so the date of domestication is unknown. The earliest written records are in Han Chinese writings from central China, dating to about 500 BC. Duck farming for both meat and eggs is a widespread and ancient industry in Southeast Asia. Wild ducks were hunted extensively in ancient Egypt and other parts of the world in ancient times, but were not domesticated. Ducks are documented in ancient Rome from the second century BC, but descriptions such as by Columella suggest that ducks in Roman agriculture were tamed, not domesticated. There was no duck breeding in Roman times, so eggs from wild ducks were needed to start duck farms.